Hi guys, welcome back to What Do You Watch? I'm Jeffrey Kawakami. And I'm Michael Kovacevic, and today we're talking about Star Wars, we're talking about the prequels, and we're talking about how they, you know, they brought us a lot of good things, despite being a much weaker trilogy. Alright, so a little background real quick. Um, 1999, when Episode 1 came out, I was eight years old. Um, and I had already seen the original series countless times. Um, had toys, had lightsabers, had all that jazz already. Um, and so part of it for me was just being a kid and getting, being able to see those movies for the first time as a child and really get to enjoy them. And although, you know, I'd, I'd see stuff, you know, oh, episode one wasn't that good, yada, 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 I'd still really enjoy them because I was a kid and they are a little more targeted towards kids. So I think the first defense really is the childhood nostalgia and that they did hit a target our audience really well, despite Jar Jar Binks and et cetera. Yeah, um, I uh, was basically born into Star Wars. I did not see Return of the Jedi in the theaters, but I heard it through my mother's stomach because she was pregnant with me <laughs> during when she went to see that movie. So, um, and I definitely grew up watching, you know, we had the VHSs, we had the movies on VHS that we would have to rewind and watch over, and we literally rewound, rewound them and then watched them over again, uh, like all day. So... And I definitely had the toys as a kid, but there was the, that drop-off period in between, you know, when I got too old for toys and until that, that seri new series, was, or the new, new trilogy was coming out, that Star Wars wasn't really on my mind. And then, but it definitely, especially in that first movie, because it was so kid-friendly, it was so um, joyous and, and light-hearted and stuff, that it brought me back to... Like, you know, feeling like a little kid watching Star Wars. And, uh, episode 1 also brought us Darth Maul, the uh, red and black super badass villain with the dual lightsabers that came yeah. out both sides. First time seeing that. When he busted that out, that was that was like, oh, they can do that, that with lightsabers? Like, um, so that was cool. And the lightsaber battles in general were just way better. I mean, anyone that wielded a lightsaber in the prequels would just slice Luke in half without a moment's thought because all he did was block little yeah, blasts, little ray gun blasts, you know, and then um, did kind of the standard at the top <laughs> and then down low and then at the top again, you know, battle with, uh, with Darth Vader, so. He was trained by old men and fighting a guy in a fully mechanical suit. Right, so. and he was also 20, <laughs> what was he, like, you know, I guess he was Apparently probably he was like, like 15, 16, 16 in, in the first, in, in Compared to, you know, the, lung, the youngling Jedis that yeah. are like four with a lightsaber training, doing yeah, the same thing four. that Luke's doing at 16. Like, so. they don't even remember all their training yeah, because they're too young to remember all their training. Yeah, it's just a part of their body. They just like, it's part of that just feeding it into you. Yeah, so, and, and then when Yoda had his lightsaber at the end of Clones, I mean, that was he, he, flipping around, you know, uh, running around, whatever he was doing, that was just an amazing lightsaber battle. Yeah. I remember being in the theater watching that, <laughs> and when he when he opened his jacket and, and, you know, force grabbed his lightsaber, I mean, there was like a, a gasp in the <laughs> audience of just like, oh my god, we are about to see this. And it was something that they couldn't do in the original series. Were they going to have a little puppet flying around on wires? Yeah. I mean... I'm, I mean, I when I first saw that, I shook I shook my head a little bit. I didn't think he needed a lightsaber because I was like, Yoda's so powerful that he should be able to fight without the use of a lightsaber. Um, however, I guess George Lucas felt it necessary to give him a lightsaber. Although that scene still was awesome. When I was a kid, I was watching, and I'm like, this is terrible for everything we learned about Yoda. <laughs> completely out of character. But I mean, you have a little little green man bobbing around, jumping mm -hmm. up and down, fighting Christopher Lee, who's like, I mean, have you seen the, the extended stuff for this for this series? You know that most of that was with a stun double, because Christopher Lee, is, all that crap, he couldn't do it. No, <laughs> so, like, too old. So, I mean, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> right, but if you remember, they even teased it in the beginning of that movie when Anakin says something about yeah, thinking he yeah, rivals Yoda yeah, as a lightsaber. Yeah, rival Master Yoda as a swordsman. That, yeah. That's the line. That's and the line. it's... Yeah, it's a little, it's a little foreshadowing and then if you see it again you're just like, okay, okay. Um, I still think... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was cool because it was highlighting what they could do in the series compared yeah. to what they could do. I, mean, I, I like... 
episode three is better. I liked uh, Yoda versus the Emperor a little better, just because there was a little more force fighting. Uh, there was force fighting in the other one, but they, they went to lightsabers really quickly. And even in episode three, when they have lightsabers, they're still using the force heavily, throwing the Senate chairs and, and etc. I don't like how Yoda's just like, oh, I fell to the ground, so I can't get back up, use the force to find my lightsaber and keep fighting. I have to just give up. I, I think it's kind of a, you know, do or do not. I mean, you know, there is no try type thing, so if he couldn't do it, he wasn't going to do some, like, suicide attempt because he knew he couldn't do it, so. Right. I mean, Another thing that uh, Phantom Menace brought us was Duel of the Fates, which is, in my opinion, the best song to come out of any of the Star Wars movies. Um, it's, it's, it, I know you've heard it, it's the dun 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 The way that the song builds, and it builds, and it's like on this grand scale, and, um, it really highlighted that lightsaber battle, and the different, the Darth Maul and Qui-Gon Jinn, neither one of them are my favorite characters, but I think they were a really good, um, like, juxtaposition against each other, as kind of like pure evil and pure Socrates kind of thing. Okay, now, I think the biggest contribution uh, of the films is really what they brought to the canon and what they brought to, like, kind of like the overall lore of Star Wars, um, especially when it comes to the Sith. The Sith aren't specifically mentioned in the original trilogy. They're mentioned in the screenplay. Darth Vader is described as Lord of the Sith. It's in the screenplay. I mean, that's internet sources, but it's in the screenplay, but it's not in the actual movie at all. So... The first time we hear the word Sith in a movie is in episode one. And we also get the rule of two in episode one. So, I mean, it, it introduces a lot there, as well as a lot of other aspects. You, you see a lot of other things that just we're just, like, used to now in Star Wars, but you realize 4, 5, and 6 didn't have any of that. Um, like, Metachlorum, if the... Metachlorum is not a good addition, but it's definitely something that... It's definitely something that people, <laughs> that people know about. <laughs> and feel very strongly about it. And feel very strongly. In a negative way. In a negative way, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely get what you're saying. And the rule of two, I think, is really interesting because when you have uh, this host of, of Jedi Knights training on all these different planets, there's all these different Jedi Knights, and all it takes is two Sith, and they are, yeah. like, equal. Like, that means that those Sith motherfuckers are badass. Yeah, right. What I want to get into is the foreshadowing that happens in the early movies um, with... Palpatine uh, telling a little Anakin he's going to watch his career with great interest. We know that that's because he wants him to become uh, Darth Vader. More subtlety. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's actually, you know, the scene on Tatooine with Anakin. I think it's either right before or right after he saves his mother. And he's mm -hmm. talking to Padme, and he comes up, and his shadow that's cast on the wall is yeah, a Darth Vader shadow. That was actually in the... Well, I mean, they, they had a similar thing to that in the... Uh in the movie trailer, in the movie, uh, the post posters. Yeah, they had little, it was little Anakin. <laughs> well, little, a little Anakin, but then also when they had the one, they also had another poster with Anakin and Padme with that same, with that same, yeah, same, the same Jack freaking shot almost, but yeah, um, they're really pushing that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you I mean, didn't know what was gonna it's, happen. It, because it's it's interesting because you know. You know the end game. You don't yeah. quite know how it's gonna get there, but you know it's going to get yeah. there. Um, and then, like, at the end of Clones, uh, end of Attack of the Clones, when the clone army actually does show up, and they're loading onto the Star Destroyers, and they start playing that Empire music, and it's like... Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a good moment, because it's the good army that's going to dispatch with the Separatists, yet there's yeah, just a sense of dread that you get that when a, that music hits. Probably the best scene in the whole movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because Yoda, we already established that Yoda laying the smack down on, on Darth, whatever his name is, uh, Count Dooku. I know, but it, it had you feeling so optimistic about number three. <laughs> it did, it did. And number three was definitely the best of the The best. Sequels. Uh, the I, only PG-13 movie to come out of the series. Yeah, I mean. but for the love of God, the writing, especially at the end, he was killing younglings. Younglings! Yeah. I, it's, uh, God. She's lost the will to live. I'm sorry, are you a doctor? I, you don't have an adrenaline I, needle you can stick I, in her heart like freaking Pulp I mean, Fiction? Anakin, that's, and that's the ironic thing. Anakin gets fucking bit, like, just fucking destroyed, and he managed to live off of right. hatred or love for her or whatever the fuck. But I, but, and then she dies because, oh, I just, I can't do it. Wait, I have this I much thought, technology. I thought this was supposed to be in defense of the prequels. 
Halloween. <laughs> it's hard. Okay. <laughs> so if you don't know, Disney's coming out with a film every year until the end of time, and basically they're doing uh, you know episode seven, episode eight, episode nine. I think those are coming out. Uh, I think there's like a year of no episode, uh, like a regular film. So it's gonna be like uh, episode seven standalone, episode eight standalone, episode nine. And the three standalones right now that are confirmed are, are Boba Fett, Han Solo, and Rogue Squadron. And I'm pretty sure they're in that order. I'm not sure if those dates have all been confirmed yet. But those are the three titles. All right, so that's going to do it for our Star Wars in defense of the prequels, the vidcast number one discussion video. Um, let us know what you thought. Let us know, likes, comments, what you liked about the prequels, what you hated about yeah. the prequels. Um, we can talk Star Wars all day, yeah. today, tomorrow, on, next day, whatever. On all kinds of topics, and this topic I can go on for much longer. Um, I mean, we got plenty of stuff. Uh, Rebels, I want to do a Rebels series. Let us know if you know what Rebels is. Uh, if you know what that is, it, let us know if you knew about the standalone films, if you're excited about those. I mean, uh, even Jeff didn't know uh, too much about them, so I had to, had to inform him on that. So, yeah, I like to be surprised. Yeah, surprises. Like Mark Hamill said, you know, we're trying to surprise you guys. It's not, it's not, we're not trying to hurt the fans by not giving out footage. They're to surprise. Check out whatareyouwatch.com <laughs> for more content. Catch you on the flip side.